In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about masking and preparing masks as far as being able to import those as textures into a 3D program to be utilized inside of a material. A brief overview, a mask is a non-destructive way of working between textures and graphics whereby you can show and hide elements without actually having to cut, erase, or delete pieces of those elements. So I'm going to show you two different options as far as generating a mask to be used inside of a 3D program such as Blender or Maya. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is even though I have this graphic open, I want to start with just the bare bones basics as far as creating a new file here. Now you have a couple of options here. I'll actually cancel out first. Up in the upper left hand corner where your toolbox is, I actually want to come down here and set the foreground and background color to black and white. When you're working with a mask, you don't have to worry about color schemes. It is completely grayscale, whereby white demonstrates what is to be shown while black is what is to be hidden. So I'm going to go ahead here and generate a new document and we'll call this 512 by 512. And I'm going to go under the advanced options here and I am going to fill with the foreground color. I want to start out with the majority hidden while then I'll go in and paint with white for what I want to show through. So I'll go ahead and say OK. So here I have my background and we can maybe say hidden. And what I can do here is I'll go ahead and make a new layer that I will call show. And say okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the brush tool and this is where you get to be a little bit creative. First off you want to make sure that you're painting with the white. So either select and change this foreground color to white or you can just do a flip here. And now I'm going to go ahead and select a brush. So maybe I go ahead here and we do kind of a foggy brush. And I'll go ahead and change the size here. And just add some fog pieces as far as the layout is concerned. So now I have this nice mask layout that I can work with as far as the design goes. And again, at any point that you change your mind or you think, oh, you know, I messed up, again, you can just flip and come back in and go between black and white to design and lay out your mask. And when you're ready, two things. I'll go ahead and do a save so that I can save my document. So I'll go ahead and create a folder and I'll call this mask examples. And we'll call this self created. And then I'll go ahead and then I'll choose to export. I'm going to go ahead actually and change the export under the file type and I'm going to choose a JPEG. You might have to scroll a little bit under the file type here. But these are actually, if you notice, they're in alphabetical order. And it's going to want to keep the same name, which is fine. So I'll go ahead and export. Keep the quality at 90 and tell it OK. So you can get really creative as far as your mask options are concerned. And in another video, I'll take you through as far as connecting this and creating a material utilizing this. But another thing that I wanted to talk about a little bit is what if you actually wanted to use a pre-created image that is already colored as your graphic or as your mask? Well, a couple things that you can do here. First off, you might want to crop it as far as the overall crop and layout here. So if I go ahead and make as far as the size goes, maybe I change the size to 512 by 512, similar to my last one there. And I'll go ahead and kind of position it over up in the corner. here. Maybe I just want to grab this corner. Instead of having to stress and worry about whether or not I can actually design or create uh, architecture at this angle, I can actually crop out and then I can actually set the image to a grayscale. By setting the image to the grayscale, you're pretty much doing what you did with your previous graphic where you created the mask, and instead we're just using the graphic itself. And to do that, you actually have a lot of color options to work with here. 
So for instance here, under the color drop-down menu, there are several options you may want to familiarize yourself with in the future as far as working with different channels and things like that. But the thing we actually want to do is desaturate the image, or you can actually just convert to a grayscale. And there we go. You have a lot of presets as far as if you wanted to work with as far as the preview is concerned, but I'm just going to leave this on the default for right now. I think I've got enough contrast here as far as the shadows and also as far as the windows are concerned that this could make for a pretty interesting mask here. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. Now that I've done that, I could go ahead and do a file and once again a save as, and we'll call this under mask examples, we'll call this maybe graphic mask. And I'll go ahead and save. And once again, I'm going to do an export as. And it wants to save once again. And since I already set it to a JPEG, it's going to save it as a JPEG for me. And I'll go ahead and export. So now I've shown you two different ways of generating masks in GIMP to be utilized in 3D software packages. In future videos, you'll get to see as far as utilizing these and using them as a texture to be pulled into a program such as Maya or Blender and being able to attach them into a material node system that will then give you a masking effect as far as your model is concerned.